What's up in War Eagle War Report family? It's your guy Ike Jones. I'm sitting in for C Dub as host tonight. And tonight we are diving further into the Auburn versus Texas AM matchup coming up this weekend, as well as the other matchups going on around the SEC. So hopefully you guys are ready to talk about all of that. Sit tight because you're about to get into the next edition of the Midweek Report. <laughs> Another Wednesday is here. We are here with the Midweek Report brought to you by show sponsor AuburnSports.com. Make sure that you lock in with AuburnSports.com for all of your updates on all things related to your Auburn Tigers. That is recruiting and the likes. Check in with them. Shout out to JG Tate and all the people over there at AuburnSports.com. We are here, Midweek Report. Myself, B-Will, Mike G, C-Dub has the night off we're going to be talking about all of the things involving the SEC this week. Some good matchups. A lot of people's first SEC matchups coming up this week. And uh, it's time to get in here and talk about it. Uh, before we get into the conversation too much, you guys need to be doing the necessary, which is sharing this video. Make sure other people are involved in the conversation. Go ahead and hit the share button right now while you're thinking about it, whether you're on Facebook or on Twitter. Share it with someone right now. Like this video. Give it the thumbs up. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, and we definitely will appreciate you all doing that. Um, we're going to definitely need my guy Mike G to get in here and talk to y'all about all of the benefits of not just being a, a free subscriber, because that's wonderful, but there are some people who get a few more special privileges. Green Name Gang, tell them how to do it, Mike G. Hey, Green Name Gang, you guys want to be a part of this. We got lots of great content. If you haven't been part of our game day experience, there are some things that are member only. We do that to keep the trolls out. You guys definitely want to be a part of that community. You guys have been doing a great job gifting memberships, signing up for memberships memberships let's keep that going become a patron this is the best way to support our channel i mentioned gifting membership you can look for that gifted membership button and give the gift of the war report to anybody who's watching youtube chooses these at random so if you interact with our channel at a high level but have not made the decision to become a patron yet youtube is likely to choose you to be on the receiving end of that membership so watch out for your emails i think that's how youtube lets you know they may let you know through the app but they'll try to get in contact with you if you win one of these gifted by another member we're giving away a mug tonight hashtag get your weight up in the comments this is brought to you by war eagle oil our guy walt taylor hashtag get your weight up make sure you spell it right so you can get into this drawing we're going to draw at the one hour mark and uh give that away um uh, give that away to a lucky member on the live stream. Uh, look, guys, this segment is now also brought to you by Lynch Toyota of Auburn. Guys, my dad loves Toyotas. It's all he buys. He had a Corolla, a Prius, a Cressida. I don't know if y'all remember the Toyota Cressida. Yeah, one of those. They've got a RAV4. Every I don't Toyota think I know anybody made. who ever owned the Cressida. I definitely <laughs> heard of them, but I don't know anybody. Yeah, uh, apparently your family and B Will's family is what's keeping Toyota in business because they just, <laughs> yeah, just buy up all the Toyotas. Bro. We know B what's up. B, B had a green Camry. B had a Camry. His mom's had and his dad had a Camry. Your mom had a Corolla, right? Or um, the mom's had an Avalon. Avalon. That's what she had. That's right. Look, yeah. guys, uh, if you're thinking about buying a new car, visit, visit Lynch Toyota of Auburn. Uh, support those who support us. You know, I, I can't speak enough. If you want a car that's going to run forever, buy a Toyota. <laughs> they will run three to 500,000 miles easy, and all you got to do is change the oil and maybe put some new tires on it every 100,000 miles. Toyotas are special. Lynch Toyota of Auburn, we appreciate them for supporting the War Report. Uh, last but not least, guys, the War Report Podcast Network is live. You don't want to miss all the great content that's coming out from our guys at the Uptemple Podcast and the College Loop and the Justin SEC Podcast that 
I'm like, all right, Ike Jones is always cooking up something for y'all. Uh, lots of great content. The, of course, the Auburn Express, uh, we're producing lots of great content in an audio-only format. You definitely don't want to miss that. Or for the podcast network, bringing you guys something fresh in the car on the ride to work. Yes, indeed. So, uh, gentlemen, it is the Wednesday before. Y'all know how we do Wednesday. We're going to get into our matchup. So for those of you who are chomping at the bit to talk about Auburn's game, don't worry. We got you. We will get into that. But before we do that, we always want to talk about what's going on around the rest of the SEC. Mm. And we'll get into our picks for those games. Speaking of picks, got to update what the Ooh. score was from last week. I'm hot on y'all tails from a percentage standpoint here. Yeah, percentage wise, Mike doing his thing. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, because you missed teams. a week where well, he had some tough matchups. You, you cheat. I would have been, been cheating. I would have been perfect. Dude. You would have picked LSU and lost another game. I would have been perfect. Cheat. Doesn't matter who would have been perfect. What matters is what has happened. And what has happened is B and Mike had a good week, eight and two, both of them respectively. Caesar took that hard one on the chin <laughs> with UNLV. That's what killed him. That's what killed him. Would he would have been right there with me that he got picked uh Vandy. With the, um, the uh Vandy win. Mm-hmm. Ah, that's right. We went wait for us, didn't we? UNLV. Oh, sure. UNLV, yeah. Yeah, that's yeah. right. That's right. We did. We did. So that, that's really what sunk Caesar right there was him trying to uh stay true to Vandy for some reason. I don't know no. why he believed mm-hmm. in Vandy. What were the two know. we got? I know we picked uh K State and Missouri one. What was the other one? I wish the ones that y'all did not hit on. Yeah. Arkansas. No, excuse me, not Arkansas. Um, um it was Arkansas. Oh, yeah. Arkansas and BYU. then Missouri. Missouri. Yep. Mm. Yeah. Mm. Well, wow, actually, Arkansas. Mike picked Missouri and he did not pick somebody else. That won. That's right. Yeah, that's right. I did. I picked Missouri over K-State. Yeah. Uh, but B. You oh, got he the picked Florida. Tennessee. He picked right. Tennessee. He got, got you got Florida. the Florida one right. And he got ah, the Tennessee pick. I was oh, the only person brave right. enough. Yeah, so you the were, Arkansas listen. one was the common one, but then you guys were uh, backwards on the Missouri situation. Wait, in the time out, Ike. Time out. We need you to settle something. Which pick was braver, Missouri versus K State or Florida versus Tennessee? Um, considering what I know now, I'd say Missouri versus K State was a braver pick. My guy, my guy. Absolutely not. <laughs> recount, <laughs> recount right now. I recount right now. <laughs> That's only one count. <laughs> yeah i don't know i'm taking I, it up I, to the next court <laughs> yeah doesn't matter we're on to the next week we are here with this week not as many games of course because more sec facing sec here but we do have more interesting games this week um i will start with the ones that i find particularly uninteresting and we will kick it off with georgia versus uab um is anybody going to, speaking of bravery, does anybody want to be brave and pick an upset here? Uh, no. <laughs> this spread uh, is ridiculous, though. Let me just say this. I, although Georgia hasn't scored enough points for me to justify thinking they're going to score 42 more points than UAB is. Yeah, I mean, they, they started slow, right? Versus South Every Carolina. Game. Yeah, Every game I mean, they've started slow. Yeah, you had some trouble getting that offense going. I am with you, Ike. I don't like them to cover this spread. But I'm definitely picking Georgia. Yeah, I can't see it happening. Um, they're the champs, man. I, I won't disrespect the champs. Yeah, they're, they're definitely champs for a reason, they, <laughs> and they've earned all of their props for that. So whatever, screw them still. Um, other non-interesting games going on. Charlotte is fl- facing now number 25 in the rankings, Florida. Is that crazy mm. to y'all that they're ranked 25? That's nuts to me, man. No, I'm sorry. Crazy. Yeah, t- crazy. Tennessee was is Tennessee. Tennessee was overrated. Okay. I don't know, man. I'm sorry. Like, I have a problem with them suddenly jumping up the rankings to 25 and Auburn is still in rank. We have not beaten a ranked team. Yeah. I don't care, B. <laughs> I don't care. I'm not using logic here. Auburn oh, should okay. be ranked. Okay. I'm, talk, right. so I'm okay. speaking with my heart right now. Okay. I have a problem with it. I think they're posers still, but whatever. Yeah. All right. So, would anybody want to pick the uh, the uh, posers to get upset in this game? No. Mm, no. Florida, Florida, Florida will win the game. Yes. Agreed. All right. 25. A very interesting game here. UTSA taking on now number 23, Tennessee. Wait, did UTSA pull that game out last week? They played. Uh, uh, they're one and two right now, so I don't know what they did. Oh, wow. 
Yeah, now they lost 37 29 to Army. That's right. They lost to Army. Mm hmm. <whistles> Looks like. Mm. I mean, Tennessee's going to win the game. I didn't think UTSA was going to beat them anyway, but I didn't realize they lost. Dang. Okay. Okay. Yeah, Tennessee. All right. So nobody's jumping out no, there on that no, one. No, no, we're definitely not jumping out on the limb there. Yeah. I mean, it's not surprising. Uh, other games, I guess, I mean, this is a little more interesting. Memphis playing at Missouri. I think Memphis is not their usual competitive selves. They're usually competitive with the power five teams they play, but I don't think they're that Memphis this year. I think they just lost their game last weekend, as a matter of fact. So I'm going to say Mizzou. Yeah, listen, I'm going with Mizzou here. I <laughs> I got looked at sideways when I said that I thought that Missouri might have a chance to mess some things up in the East this year. I mean, Missouri is playing well. They're, they're undefeated yeah, so far. Yeah, and and everybody on this show looked at me sideways when I said that. I said, well, <laughs> I Missouri has a chance to mess some things up in the East, and, and the SEC is looking super suspect. So – Looking at their schedule, five and zero oh looks like a real possibility for them. Uh, yeah, I mean, I like I like Missouri in this one. I, I like don't Missouri. know. I haven't looked at their schedule to know whether five and zero oh is a possibility for them, but they do look good. They look better than what I thought they were going to. Their so next I'll, game I'll is that. Vanderbilt after this. Oh, well, so if you're picking yeah. them here, I think five and zero oh is a possibility. Is, is a real possibility for them. I'm not sure a lot of people had them starting five and zero. Oh. Yeah, that's I mean that's fair, I guess. That's that's fair. I'm going to go with ooh. The thicker kicker. This is crazy though. I mean, Missouri's <laughs> only favorite by six at home versus Memphis. Is Memphis because Missouri's even... not that good. That's why. I ain't who ain't nobody beat him yet. So come Missouri, on. Man. Memphis hasn't lost yet. Come on, man. I'm, I'm not telling you I'm a believer in Missouri. I'm just saying that their defense looked good last year, and it's continued to look good this year, and their offense has not absolutely screwed this up. Now, I mean, they did need a 61-yard field goal to win last week, but. That's true. They're playing at home. I, I think they'll be better at oh, they're home. They're playing in St. Louis, someone has just said on the timeline. So, so Oh, it's a neutral site game. game. Yeah, neutral oh. site. Interesting. I think I think they win. I think they win the game. I think Mizzou wins the game. Yeah, I mean, I don't, I don't disagree. I, I'm I'm not taking any any flyers on any of these uh, underdogs this week. So, um, yeah. All right. Uh, I'm trying to think which game interests me the least of these SEC matchups because the rest of them that we're going to get into are SEC on SEC games. Mm -hmm. I know which one I want to talk about last. Let's go with Kentucky and Vandy. Kentucky and Vanderbilt. What are you guys feeling about this game? Vandy bad. Kentucky <laughs> less bad. <laughs> yeah, I'll go with Kentucky. Taking Kentucky. I'm taking Kentucky in this one. Didn't didn't uh, Kentucky Vandy. get snuck by Vandy last year because Will Levis was hurt and he sat out that game and Vandy won that game? Uh, uh, let's sure. I, I will tell you, 2022, Kentucky and Vandy. Yes, they took the L, 24 to 21. Yeah, Kentucky getting it back. Back in blood, Kentucky. Levis played though. Well, I don't know. Did he get hurt? I mean, he's, he has stats. He played hurt, I think, in that game. Yeah, 109 yards fasting doesn't suggest suggest something happened. Oh, you know what? I forgot that Caesar sent me his picks. Let me make sure I'm not. Um, okay, he got Kentucky in that game, and he went chalk for the rest of them. So okay, mm -hmm. so yeah, we're all on the same page game. so far. Yeah. Okay. All right. I want to make sure I'm not uh, forgetting what he had in any of these games. But, yeah, I'm taking Kentucky in this one as well. I am not a believer in what Vanderbilt's doing right now at all. So, all right. Uh, let's see. Which one do I want to do next? All right. Let's do this one. Mississippi State versus South Carolina. South Carolina. I mm. like this. I like this one. I like this one. It's got to be South Carolina. At least South Carolina has shown some fight. Caesar took so Mississippi Caesar. State. God bless Unless you, Caesar. I'm, um, making a mistake here. Let's see. Da, 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 yeah. Will Rogers went eleven for twenty-eight for a hundred and three yards. You Actually, see what I'm saying? No, no, he took South Carolina. Excuse me. This is never mind. Yeah, he took okay. South Carolina. 
I'm about to say. Okay. South Carolina has to get up off the mat here. They lost yeah. badly to to UNC. They lost admirably to Georgia, but they got to get up off the mat. Like Frank Beamer's whole thing is all this momentum and this energy. You lose three games in September. But they do this every year. They come out and they stink up the first few weeks of the season, and then they find a way to get bowl eligible at the end. Of the, like this is just kind of what it seems like a Shane Beamer coach team is going to be. They're going to have a late momentum push, and they're going to get all rah rah. Nobody believes in us, and they're going to go beat somebody who they weren't supposed to beat late in the season to get back bowl eligible. It just seems like the mo for this team. I don't think they do it this year. I think so. Two years ago, when we played them. Uh, under Brian Harson's first year, they actually had a lot of QB injuries. And that was some of the reason that they were so bad early in the year. Like, remember, they had gotten down to like a grad assistant, ended up playing the game for him at quarterback because their starter was hurt. And, and so they had a lot of injuries and they really, we gave them a game. Honestly, it's disappointing. But last year they did do that, though. It was Spencer Rattler. Somehow they found something. They beat Tim Tennessee convincingly. They beat Clemson, which was a hell of a surprise. You can't lose three in September, though, man. You can't. Yeah, I don't, I don't think you can lose three in September. Now, I guess they have some more of their cupcakes later in the season. I right? mean, they can lose three in September. They shouldn't, but they could mm. do it. They could. But see, their their September is different from our September. They played. They would have played three Power Five opponents. They 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 did have a, they have a tough schedule this season, just in general. So yeah. Okay. So hmm. still, man, Mississippi State is not good like the 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 level of bad that i saw from them against lsu even if it's lsu you they've been able to compete better than that against lsu in years past that was bad moving away from At the ra was a bad idea. grief that was embarrassing yeah maybe this is one of those cases where the head coach got you know bequeathed the the job it, it's, it's not really his thing maybe he wasn't ready so i'm, I'm gonna say south carolina Mm. Yeah, I'm taking South Carolina in this game as well. I just I haven't seen anything from Mississippi State that resembles an offense that makes any sense. Uh, Will Rogers has been a shell of himself this year. I don't think this is the week that he gets it back on track. Um, they just they were out of sync just completely. Like I just I didn't recognize the quarterback playing for Mississippi State when I watched him play LSU. And LSU's good. Don't get me wrong. It's not as if LSU isn't going to make some other teams look bad. Right. But they looked abysmal like it's it was worse than bad so yeah. um yeah I'm, I'm gonna have yeah, to go hey, yeah i'm gonna go south carolina on this one i i thought i was i wondered what this might mississippi state team might look like without mike leach is you know uh rest in peace uh but you know without his influence on the offense and i think too many people assumed it would just be a continuation of what they had always been doing and it i quite honestly um that I didn't think that it would be. I didn't think it was a given. So um, he only threw the ball 28 times. That's what I'm saying. Like, it's just like, like it's not the same. Like, no, it's not the same, man. I'm his going total yardage is way down. His number of attempts is way down. His completion percentages is down. Like, it's just Are not. they running air raid even? No. Like, no. No. Yeah. Running. All right. Yeah. yeah. No, man. Completely They're running off. It's a defensive coordinator's dream. Ball control. <laughs> safe yeah. and and that is not what they were equipped to do they were barely equipped to run air raid it was just that mike leach was he knew what to do and man they lost they lost too much knowledge i'm sorry that. like i mean this is the equivalent of uh deciding you want to be an architect after you went through two years of like mechanical engineering <laughs> you're not gonna you're not it's, it's gonna fail right like i i'm not i i i'm shocked at this but yeah i'm going with south carolina i, I don't like it. i don't like it. I like Mississippi State for anything. Yeah. Matter of fact, did I put them in the boss column? I did. That's yeah. why I put them there, because I knew they would be a miss. <laughs> all right. <laughs> yeah, I knew exactly what was happening. Yeah, I believe that. Um, all right, let's get to slightly more interesting game. Arkansas heading to face LSU. Not hmm. really more interesting, but, you know, hey, there's only really one interesting game on the schedule this week. Yeah, listen, LSU. I'm going LSU in this one. I I'm not an Arkansas believer. Like, there are a lot of people who felt like this would be a toss game for Auburn. I, I would, just wasn't quite – like, I mean, I get it. I get it. But, yeah, I'm going with LSU. I, I still think they have a chance to have a pretty good season. Um, and I don't see that getting derailed by Arkansas. 
Agreed. Agreed. Yeah, LSU is good. Arkansas is just barely okay. And I don't really... Ooh. Arkansas and LSU usually play each other very, very, very tough. They th- That's a rivalry. Within that's the, true. That's an inter... That's an inside very this true. division. That's a rivalry. Oh, the 6 p.m. game, away. too, in Baton Rouge? Oh, no, nah, bro. Yeah, and then yeah. Night, night in Death Valley. <clears throat> yeah, so I believe uh, that Arkansas probably plays it closer than we expect. And it's kind of like when we heard the, the stat about the Florida game that Tennessee hadn't won in Florida in like 20 years. Mm-hmm. There's just something there about it. It's the same thing with Arkansas and LSU. Whether they're the better team or not, Arkansas usually just plays them to the death. But LSU's better. And Arkansas... Cam Newton Jr. just isn't doing enough for him. So I I re- I really so they're not even so let's just be clear. KJ Jefferson is not even really running the ball this year. They're they are hesitant to have him run this year because they want to try to keep him healthy. A part of what makes KJ Jefferson a special quarterback is his ability to run. Raheem Sanders is hurt right now, so they're still struggling to try to figure out what that run game is going to look like, and you're not running your QB as often. Completely different offensive scheme. I don't know. I, I I watched a little bit of that Arkansas and BYU game, and I was like uh, amazed that uh, Arkansas was able to like BYU was even able to make this respectable because Arkansas was uh, punching them in the mouth early, and mm-hmm. for them to let BYU come back and win that game. After like, I think they were up like 14 nothing within like the first five minutes. It was some stupid where like they were just I was like, they lost this game. Right. They had yeah. all the momentum at home and couldn't find a way to put them away. I was just like, yo, this is crazy. Like, I don't I don't believe in Arkansas at all anymore after going and watching that BYU game. Right. Mm-hmm. Um, That's where I'm at, too. So yeah, I, I don't I don't know that they find a way to beat LSU at LSU. Can't see it happening. Um, LSU's too good. Arkansas is too suspect. And again, if you're not going to that that to me would be like LSU not using their quarterback as a runner. It's like, what are we doing here? Like that's right. part of what makes him good. You're not gonna right. use that as part of your game plan. Mm-hmm. Like I get it, you know, off schedule stuff and he's just gonna scramble around, maybe that, but you're not gonna actually run like read option stuff or quarterback draws none of that okay all right so just try to make kj jefferson a pocket passer that's your strategy this year arkansas which he isn't he's never been they were talking about him during that game and they were saying yeah they he went to uh, a new qb coach and that qb you know get, get kg jefferson's what like a fourth year starter now right mm-hmm. like he's been start and they're like yeah he's learning to throw with anticipation and better uh ball location i was like in his senior year you're just learning how to do that, bro. Like that's mm. sophomore year figuring out how to do that sort of thing. Your senior year, you shouldn't still be trying to figure out where passes need to be delivered so that they can get run after the catch. Yeah. KJ yeah. ain't it, man. It's not. People want to try to say he's the best quarterback in the SEC at the top of the season. He he <laughs> ain't eh. people people get those returning names. I've heard his name before. He's good. No, no, he's not. He's just been here a while. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. All right. So the only other real interesting game this week. Ole Miss traveling to Bama. Can Ole Miss, can Lane Kiffin finally, finally get this Nick Saban monkey off of his back? Mm-hmm. Because mm-hmm. he finds ways to screw this game up mm-hmm. every single time year and i think he actually has the better team this year can he get the win i think he's got the better quarterback oh that's not even a competition jackson darts leagues better than anybody they're going to try out at quarterback yeah so they or at least what i've seen from those quarterbacks i don't know you know down the line projections all that kind of stuff nothing i've seen from the quarterback position at alabama thus far is equivalent to what Jackson Dart has done. And I don't think Jackson Dart's amazing. I just don't think any of the quarterbacks for Alabama are particularly good. So, Yeah, it's Ole Miss averaging 526 yards per game so far this season. They are definitely putting up yardage. Bama only 367. Man, I want to believe, I believe Ole Miss has the team to win this game. I'm just not sure if they have the coaching. Mm. 
But with new coordinators for Nick Saban, maybe this year they have slightly better coaching. I would you like like I, this Kiffin is what makes this way to tough. mess this one up. Yeah. This is what makes it tough because if Lane Kiffin finds ways to screw this game up every he should have won this game a couple of times already i agree and he finds ways finds to ways mess to it lose. up he finds yeah. ways to lose he's um, already stirring the pot talking about yeah we don't even know who's calling the defense over there that looks a lot more like t-rob defense than it does like why why are you doing this lane uh <laughs> i was telling ike this be our uh our friend uh, our bama friend courtney mckinney tweeted out uh we're really going to lose uh, to Ole Miss, to Pete Golden after talking all that crap. <laughs> and then Lane Kiffin responded to her with a crying <laughs> emoji face. And I I warned them. I warned them about Kevin Steele. I warned every Bama fan I knew about Kevin Steele, and I warned them about losing good offensive coordinators year after year. And I felt like, hey, man, this might be the weakest round of coordinator Saban has hired in quite some time. Yeah, uh, yeah, like wow. So, l- look, man, <laughs> it's in, in Tuscaloosa. Be, it being in Tuscaloosa does, you know, I think help narrow down some of the mistakes for Bama. They play it, a little bit of a cleaner game for home. um t- Texas game. Now, just so we can put it out there, Caesar did pick Ole Miss to win this game. Did he? Yes. He he picked Broken Ugly. Okay. Yeah. Milrow's gonna start. Yeah, for sure. Milrow is back. Milrow's in the gonna start. Game. Yeah, I'm gonna go with Bama in this one. I I think that Kiffin messes this up. I think the Kiffin curse continues versus Saban. Now a lot of his assistants finds find ways to beat him. He's got okay. some kind of like mind control thing going on. I mean, he's now lost to two of them because he lost to Jimbo once, and then he just lost to Sarkeesian. So yeah, and Kirby. Mystique. So three. Oh, three. I forgot he lost to Kirby. So the mystique maybe is off of that a little bit at this point in time. But it, it, Lane Kiffin still uh, firmly in what, that column of L's. When did he lose to Kirby? Championship. Yeah, the national championship game. Twenty twenty one. I mean the um, SEC championship game. Excuse me. No, it was a national championship game. He beat Kirby in the in the SEC championship game, twenty twenty one. Oh, Bryce that's Young's right. And then yeah, and then lost uh, in the national championship rematch. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Oh yeah, you're right. In the national championship rematch, because I was starting to like, wait, that first one Kirby lost. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah, man, I'm gonna go with Bama in this one. I'm I'm not an Ole Miss true, even though I still think Auburn versus Ole Miss is gonna be some kind of pivotal game in the West. Is in this weird year in the West. No, I don't know. <laughs> no, I'm switching. I was switching. I'll go with Ole Miss in this one. I'll go okay. with Ole Miss. Lane Kiffin pulls it off. The curse is broken. All right. Caesar yes. and Mike both going Ooh. Ole Miss. B. I, I have not said that. No confidence in this. <laughs> yeah, I don't. I, I, I'm, I'm going to make a pick that I have no confidence in, but I am going to make it. Okay. What you got. All right. That's honest. That's honest. Alabama's going to win this game. Oh, That's what I, think. Had to do I think Alabama wins it, and I think well, they win it because Ole Miss is still smoke and mirrors. Just a yeah, little I, bit. I, I don't actually, hate that reasoning. <laughs> I'm actually with B on this one. I have Bama winning this game, not because I, I think that there's some – I'm not with the, well, Nick Saban's going to figure it. And like, no. What I believe is that they're going to line up and they're going to try to run the football a bunch against Ole Miss, mm-hmm. and I still don't believe Ole Miss can stop the run well enough to keep Jalen Milrow in a position where he's going to feel uncomfortable. If they're going to let Jalen Milrow run and they're going to line up and try to run the football, I think they'll be fine. If they want him to drop back and pass the ball 30 to 40 times this game, it's going to get ugly. I think Bama wins this game. I don't know how close it's going to be. I don't know. I just think that they're going to find a way to pull this off and Lane Kiffin will do something that's going to make me laugh at him. Yeah. Mm, all right. I, I don't know how much of it is really going to be. In both games that I watched from uh, Ole Miss, both Georgia Tech, the first half of Georgia Tech, the first half of Tulane, the other team is in in them with it, and neither team was nearly as talented as Ole Miss is. So 
if you're just hanging, kind of like last year, they just put it on a bunch of teams that were just, they overpowered. Remember, they were like struggling with Vandy for the first half of the game, and then they pulled away and scored like four touchdowns straight. They do this, and which is why when they started playing competent teams, they started losing. And maybe some of the smoke from the Auburn job had something to do with that as well. I don't think, I think Bama solved a problem this last weekend by everybody was down on Milrow after the Texas game. So they said, all right, you want to see Buckner? <laughs> right. <laughs> okay. You want to see Ty Simpson? Yeah. And then after that embarrassing show at South Florida, 17 mm. points total, came home and said, like I said the first time, Jalen Milrose a starter. Shut up. <laughs> right. I think so, that gives you some, some, you know who your starter is. We're not pulling them. You know what you got. You know what he can and can't do. There's going to be no, maybe we can go to this. No, no, we're not. Give us the game plan. A team yeah. that is actually susceptible against the run, like Ole Miss compared to what Texas was. Texas is elite on the defensive line. Ole Miss is not. I think they got enough to take care of Ole Miss this weekend. Yeah. Yeah. I, I Again, I think it's going to it's going to come down to be, being able to move bodies in the trenches. And I think that Bama can do that a little bit better. Bama's defense, though, they this the thing that worries me about this pick is the the inconsistency of Bama and being able to stop the pass. And, you know, Ole Miss is going to want to air it out. You know, they yeah. are. And so if Jackson Dart is has a good game, Ole Miss absolutely can win this game. I'm just banking on Bama choking the clock out and Jalen Milrow being able to orchestrate some drives where the run game is really going to get going. So that's all I got for it on that one. Yeah. Uh, definitely see you guys putting your picks in, and we appreciate you all jumping in here with us. Make sure that you go ahead and share the video. We are going to take a quick break, and I'll let you hear a few words from the people that help keep the lights on around here at the War of Poor hey. and uh, get our mid-roll sponsors in here. We will be right back, and we'll talk more about – Auburn versus Texas A&M. You are watching the Midweek Report. This edition of the War Report is brought to you by our generous sponsors. AuburnSports.com. For news and notes on all things Auburn sports, head over to AuburnSports.com. When you work out, grill out, and chill out, you deserve the best life possible, and Golden's Cast Iron is here to provide the tools to help you do it. Check them out at Golden'sCastIron.com. And our giveaway sponsor, War Eagle Oil. For all of your motor oil and related products, head over to WarEagleOil.com. Guys, become a patron. This is a great thing to do for our channel. Uh, we love our patrons. If you haven't experienced our game day experience yet, uh, it is amazing. And especially when it's an away game, because we are all sitting in front of our computers for the away games. Uh, become a patron member. Uh, this is a great way to be kind of a micro sponsor of our channel, right? $5.99 helps us keep the lights on, as Ike mentioned. Uh, become a uh, become a patron, please. And give the gift of the war report. You guys have been doing a great job with this. Memberships are up large part because you guys are giving the gift of the war report that somebody doesn't have it beside our game day experience you also get film reviews that ike is doing that's patron only content uh that we're doing for you all we're doing a giveaway hashtag get your weight up in the comments to get into that giveaway at the one hour mark we will draw for this mug hashtag get your weight up this is brought to you by war eagle oil longtime sponsor of the war report we appreciate them also lynch toyota of auburn mentioned at the top of the broadcast my family has owned every Toyota that's ever been made. <laughs> every single one. Man, dude, do you remember the Yaris B? Like we had yeah, a Yaris. little bitty one. Yeah. Yeah, we had a Yaris. An Echo we had an Echo. Oh, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah, 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 yeah going all. deep in there. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so uh Liz Toyota of Auburn, we want to thank them for coming on as a fall sponsor of the War Report. Uh guys, support local business. This is a great thing to do if you're thinking about buying a new car. You know, look at Toyotas. They're, they're great, dependable dependable vehicles. And Lynch Toyota can hook you guys up over there. Tell them that the War Report sent you. Also, check out the Pod Network. Uh, the War Report Podcast Network is out here. We want to thank the Uptempo Podcast, the College Loop, for joining us. Just, just the SEC. Uh, just a sec, right? Um, you want to get in here on all this content. We're doing audio-only content for you guys. So uh, you guys can listen to Mike and memes. Jake Crane joins us uh, here and there. There's some stuff that you can't get anywhere else but on the War, Pro War Report Podcast Network. So please go over to whatever you listen on podcast on, subscribe, download, give us a five-star review, help us 
spread the good word of the war rapport through podcast. All right. The time has come for what you guys have definitely been waiting on us to talk about this Auburn versus Texas A&M mm. matchup. Let's look at the head to head here. Auburn uh, currently three and oh, Texas A&M two and one. I didn't put that on there for some reason, but who cares? Uh, the game is coming up this Saturday at 11 a.m. Central Standard Time on ESPN. Texas A&M favored in this game by a touchdown. The ESPN uh, Football Power Index has Texas A&M favored 67.2%. Texas A&M leads the series 9-12. to 12. The last meeting, of course, famously the uh, game last year where Auburn won 13 to nothing. Very ugly game. Very ugly game, but Auburn pulled out the victory in Cadillac's first win as interim head coach. This game is going to be at College Station. Gentlemen, it's time to talk about it. How are we feeling about this? Mike and I talked about it a little bit this morning. Mike, you've been on a couple of other places. I'm going to let B. Will get it off on yes, his thoughts I first <laughs> uh, because Mike has had a couple of opportunities to talk about this. But B. Will, how are you feeling about Auburn versus Texas A&M right now? I have no idea. I feel nothing. We don't I know enough. Nothing. We haven't seen enough. We saw AM get shredded by a, a Miami pass game, and we've seen our pass game struggle. You would say that's that's a, a loss for us, right? Because we don't have a thing that's their weakness. Then I saw Peyton Thorne actually look like it was coming together on the ground and in the air the second half of the game. And I say, oh, well, I don't know. We might have it. Then I look at Texas AM's third down defense. And I say, ooh. They might be pretty well put together when it comes to getting that stop. And then I look at their schedule and say, yeah, but I don't know, because they played two teams that are absolutely awful. They played a uh, Miami, and Miami didn't really get stopped. <laughs> they put up they put up 40-some points. So, I mean, hey, how good is your third down defense? You're getting outscored like that. So, um, I don't they know what to make. On, they just scored on first and second down. They weren't worried. Yeah, about, hey, they you know what I'm saying? Forty yard bombs. <laughs> let's let's get it. So I don't really know what either one of these teams are. That's the problem. We don't know what these either one of these teams are. We talked about it on Sunday, and I said it then. I'm even more confident now. The the things started looking like they were coming together on Sunday for our offense. I feel like we should have seen that on. Uh, two, a week ago, a week and a half ago at Cal. That was the weekend to have a work in progress looking like things were starting to come together. Not Sanford. Because we can't make anything of that against Sanford. They were always going to be out overpowered. I don't know how good or sound they are defensively to be able to measure our offensive output against Sanford. So I can't say we're definitely on the right track. I can say we look better, but we should look better against somebody who's less talented than we are. Mm -hmm. So what do I know about our offense for sure? That Peyton Thorne is going to start? that he may be prone to making mistakes. I don't know much more than that. I know that A&M hasn't really run the ball well. I don't know if it's because they don't want to, because they're trying to get their, their pass game reps against cupcakes like we tried to do last week. What's the reason they haven't run well? Is their offensive line not that good? Is it that they just really like Wegman or Bobby Petrino's just pass That's happy? Kind of, it's, kind of, it's kind of a Bobby Petrino offense. Honestly. Okay. So there are a lot of reasons why, but we still don't know who they are in the run game, really. Texas, uh, not Texas, I keep saying Texas saying them. Miami kind of forced them to pass when they started putting up so many points. And so they weren't going to just be able to pound the rock anyway. Time was a factor. You got them past the ball. They weren't able to do it well enough to get back in the game. I think this is going to be a dog fight. I think this is going to be a very, very close game. And I have no idea who's going to win it. <laughs> Because we don't know who these teams are. We don't know. We don't know yet. Three weeks, two cupcake games for each team. We have no idea who these teams are yet. So I'm going to just assume that Auburn wins. Because I am a homer. I am a homer Simpson. I am homer. I'm going with Auburn. <laughs> All right. Not mad at that at all. Like I said, Mike G, you've had your opportunity to speak on this a few times. But, hey, listen, maybe someone has not heard your thoughts. Thoughts on this game, Texas A&M welcoming the Tigers into College Station. I'll approach it from a different standpoint. I, I, I think we know who Texas A&M is, right? Their team is going to throw the ball, and they're going to put the game in Connor Wegman's hands. That's what they've shown 
right? The, the, the Miami game, a lot of the hubbub about the Miami game, I think, is over. That, that game was pretty off, – offensively, that game was pretty evenly matched, right? The, the score was 26 to 31 at the end of the third quarter. They out – like, Miami outgained Texas A&M by, what, 18 yards in that game? <laughs> You know, through the air, they were evenly matched. On the ground, they outgained Miami by 20 yards. You know, turnovers certainly hurt them <laughs> in this one. But I think we know. I think we know who Texas A&M is, right? They've got a ton of talent, right? They've got two really good receivers. Um, you know, I, I, I do. They do. Have, they are a little banged up. I'm not sure that's being talked about enough, right? Like they do have some. They are facing some injuries, um, mm-hmm. but. I think I think they know who they I think they know who they are and what they want to do right now. What sucks for them is, is that it may, it's going to be strength on strength when they play Auburn. Their passing game versus our pass defense to me is the key to the game because Auburn to win this game is going to have to hold them, I think, below 24 points. I don't think Auburn can win a shootout right now at Texas A&M. I don't think this is going to be particularly high scoring. And what worries me even more is I'm not sure that Auburn has an identity on offense. I think that the quarterback experiment experiment for the first three games was to the detriment of this team, right? They spent the whole game against Sanford trying to get a, an experienced transfer quarterback settled. That blows my mind. Right. Peyton Thorne. Part of the reason you bring in Peyton Thorne is is that he's supposed to hit the ground running, man. He was supposed to be starting at square three. The start of this season looks to me like he started at square one. And whether you want to put that on him or the coaching or the play calling, who knows? Right. I'm not saying which one it is. I'm just saying who is Auburn on offense? I don't know who they are on offense. I'm not sure that they really learned anything on Saturday. Like, I'm not sure they got better due to the level of competition. I'm not sure they got better. Right. Uh, it looked like they were having tryouts at wide receiver on Saturday. They ran so many combinations out there. Now, they had some guys coming back from injury. I, this was just not where I envisioned them going into Texas A&M. So, you know, where I digress from where B is at, I, I think Texas A&M knows exactly who they are and what they want to do. Whether they can do it is another thing or not. But I would take at, at on at for this matchup this week, Texas A&M being at home and Auburn being on the road and how these seasons have started. I mean, they learned something about themselves in that loss to Miami. I think they learned exactly where they're at. And Bobby Petrino was was cooking up something just for this. I'm a little shocked because B was real high on Petrino coming into the season. So this take on Texas A&M, I, I, it shocks me a little bit. I, I, I think we've seen enough of them know who they are. Uh, so I don't know who Auburn is just yet, and I'm happy to be wrong on this one. But I don't know what you see on tape that says Auburn's going to do what going into Saturday. I think that's an advantage. I was about to, my my point here is going to be a couple of things. What what you, you I mean, do know who Texas A and M is, and it has and it's been underwhelming. So I think that Connor Wickman can throw the ball really well. But to your point, that strength on strength, I'm not as worried about that portion of things. And I think not know for Texas A&M to come in not really knowing what they're going to face is that's that's a dangerous proposition to go in there and say, I have no idea what team. I'm, how do you prepare for that? How is Texas A&M going to prepare for Auburn, an Auburn team that they don't have the first clue who they're going to face? You got to go know, back and well, look at. Well, I don't the know that they don't have no no clue who they're going to face. If I you don't know who, what their identity is, how does Texas A&M? Yeah, that, that's that, that, those are two those are two different things. Just when I say no identity, I'm saying I don't know this team knows what they can do well. Uh, that's not advantage Auburn, man. That's advantage Texas A&M when you go in not knowing what you can actually do well versus a Power Five opponent. I mean, how we know, know what they, they can, can do well against. We know what they can do well versus a power five opponent. They passed the ball at a pretty high level. They went eight for eighteen. I mean, they killed Miami on third downs. Like you know, we got to see them tested versus a power five opponent. We have mm-hmm. not really seen Auburn do anything efficiently versus a, five, a power five opponent. So yeah, you know, when I say no, when I say no identity, I'm not talking about scheme and all that stuff. I'm talking about what does this team do well offensively really so okay and so i i i i I hear what you're saying i'm still going to disagree and say that 
I think Texas A&M is going to have a difficult time trying to figure out how, because Auburn hasn't looked the same game to game. So that's going to be difficult for you to say, all right, well, we got to figure out who we're going to stop. We're going to stop their run game. Well, they haven't been running the game particularly well, but you know they have really good running backs. Oh, we're going to have to stop five because he's going to get a lot of catches. Well, they've still got other guys that they could get the ball to that they haven't been throwing the ball to that are super talented. I think Auburn is going to look drastically different week to week, and it's going to be difficult for anybody to just say, this is how you stop this Auburn football team because they've got the options to be able to do those sorts of things. Now, again, I'm not saying that you're wrong about Auburn's offensive identity to this point in the season. I actually agree with you. There is nothing that says that's the fingerprint of this offense, run the ball in this way. This is where we, you and I part ways. I do think you learned something from that Sanford game. I think you absolutely learn how you're able to run the RPO offense, which is what I wanted to see, regardless of what the level of competition is. You have to run it. That's why I think it was stupid for Bama to go out there and just basically say, all right, well, we're going to throw a different quarterback out there. How is Jalen Milrow going to get better sitting on the bench? Right. Like you don't just give reps to somebody else just for the heck of it. I thought that was stupid. I I get you want to stick it to the fans. Go out there and run your stuff with the guy that you want running that stuff and give him an opportunity to prove it. The quarterback and wide receiver dynamic has to get better. I think it got a little bit better during this game. You saw more opportunities for wide receivers to get the ball in RPO situations. You saw Peyton Thorne able to deliver the ball more accurately, not perfect, but more accurately in that game. And you saw them being able to establish themselves as a team that has a threat Whether he's going to run for a hundred and something yards, that's not going to happen. But a threat for Peyton Thorne to be able to pick up yardage with his legs, you have to at least respect it, whether you feel like he can outrun your – I just watched – again, I've been watching a lot of film. I just watched UL Monroe's quarterback break off a 40-yard run against Texas A&M last week. Yeah, I, I, I'm, I'm not with you on that. I don't think Peyton Thorne's going to do anything close. I don't think there's anything. I'm not that saying going he's to going to, to do anything close. I, to that. I, I don't, I don't think that they have to respect it. I, I think you're, that you're 100 percent wrong. Athlete on athlete, that's not going to happen. He's not going to have 11. He's not going to be the lead rusher in this game. That's why I say he nobody said that. Stanford, that's not right. I literally like, said what that's he did not against the case. Stanford was, 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 was none of that was real. None I, of that I, was real. I like, literally well, said that's not the case though. Was that? I said the stat sheet said that the, those were actual yards. That, that yeah, counted. yeah, I, yeah, sure. But I, mean, I literally Stanford, said I don't expect Peyton for, Thorne to run for, for hundred yards. So how, him, how are you? Right, yeah. How are but, you rebutting but, but, that uh, point with right, what I right. said? I, you know, but again, when you're talking about the threat of him to run, right? Mm-hmm. He's not. A, he's not a threat to run versus Texas A&M. He's, he's not. He's Incorrect. not. Incorrect. Yeah, we yeah we Incorrect. can agree to disagree with on that one. I'm I'm just telling you, I don't no, think they're going to respect it. They're going to they're going to contain him in the pocket, and they're going to force him to beat them with his arm. That's that's what's on tape, right? Okay. Make this quarterback beat you with his arm. Whether he can do that or not, I'm not saying whether he can or not. I'm just saying I have not seen anything on tape that suggests that versus this level of competition that it, that gives me a high level of confidence that that's going to be the case regardless of the scheme. Right? How much like, of Texas so, A&M have you watched? I've watched enough. I've watched enough to know that these are going to be much better athletes than they've gone against. And I don't think they've improved that much from Cal to now. I don't. I don't, I don't think they've improved that much from Cal to now. So you, I'm not high on this game. I'm just not high on this game. I understand that. But I'm, I'm trying to understand your points because the points that you're making don't align with the actual facts of what's happened in, in any game at all. You're saying Peyton Thorne is not a threat to run the football. That is that is not factually this, not 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 against this team. Factually not incorrect, Saturday. Mike. Well, I'm, I'm not saying he's going to run what's for a going 100. to happen on Saturday. On I Saturday, just told you. you're projecting what what's happening. I don't care about no, any of that. Not. I I don't care about any of that. I'm telling you on but Saturday, you're wrong. That's he's not the, a okay. Statement. Well, then I'm wrong. I'm telling you. I don't care if I'm wrong. I'm telling you that what's going to happen. I'm going to be right after Saturday. We're not going to see Peyton Thorne carry the ball very much on Saturday. And he maybe that's what they're telling they're, 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 they're carry on, right? But that's why I keep saying we didn't learn anything against Sanford. None of that shit was real, man. It wasn't. This is going to be a much more athletic team that they're going up against. And I don't see Auburn doing anything, uh, doing anything like if they play like they did on Saturday, they're going to get beat by two touchdowns easy in this game. If they play like they did on Saturday in College Station, they're going to get by two, beat by two touchdowns easy. This won't yeah. be this won't be a game going into the fourth quarter. 
Now, so, not, that's not that's not to say that they're not going to improve. I'm saying, like, I just have not seen anything that suggests that Auburn is going to be able to play to a level on the road in College Station that this is going to be competitive going okay. into the fourth quarter. So, so I, I, every time I start to talk, you you try to just jump in and 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 negate what I'm saying. You're not hearing what I'm saying though, because it's it doesn't agree with what you're saying, and I get that. It's not factual that Texas A&M is going to stop Peyton Thorne from gaining five yards on a run. Like, that's just not I, – I, again, I never and I will not ever say I think Peyton Thorne's going to run for 100 yards on Texas A&M. He doesn't need to. He doesn't have to do that in order for him to be effective as a runner. You just got to go pick up a five-yard first down every now and then. So that's number one. Number two, to say that you learned nothing or they're not better – from what you saw in Sanford, that negates the fact that he actually had some sort of chemistry formed with the wide receivers. That matters. That matters whether it's against elite competition or not. If a guy's open and you hit him, then that is chemistry which, being which, formed. Which receivers did he form chemistry with on Saturday that All he didn't already have? That it doesn't matter. It have. doesn't matter whether you're building on previous chemistry or you're building chemistry with new receivers. That's That's kind of irrelevant. And again, you're saying that after watching, so you watched the the, the Louisiana Monroe game for, for Texas A and M. Yeah, I did. I did. Yeah. So just, you I'm... saw their quarterback, who is equally as athletic as Peyton Thorn, break off long runs in that game, and you're telling me Peyton Thorn has no ability to do that. I'm not saying he has no ability. I'm not. I'm saying that it's not likely that he's going to do that on Saturday. No, I don't. I don't think it's likely that he's going to do so that. So it's likely I think for UL Monroe to do it, but not. I don't, I don't. I don't think it was likely for UL Monroe to do it. But he it did. Happens, it. Ike. It happens. Things Correct. happen, man. UMass broke off a run. You're talking about one play. I'm, no, talking, I'm about talking about the entirety play. of a game. I'm talking about I'm the entirety of the game. Play, That's right. What Payne I'm saying. Thorne. I'm, what I'm saying is Peyton Thorne as a runner is not a serious threat this game. Coming Saturday, it's just not. He's going to have to beat them with his that. arm. I didn't right, say that. but that's the point I'm making. That's you, the exact point I'm making is that him as a runner is not a threat. Who is saying that though? Who says well, you keep bringing up some run that he that some random quarterback broke off? I'm not saying he he, he can't get a big play here and there. I'm talking about in that's all I'm asking. That's all I'm saying. He needs to game do. plan. Yeah, I I don't think that that's I don't think that that's going to be relevant at all in this game. I don't think it's going to be relevant. I think that they are going to play to stop the run. And they're going to force Payton, whether it's him carrying the ball or Damari or Jarquez, and he's going to have to win this game with his arm offensively. I don't disagree with that. I, yeah, but that's, I, that's, and that's I've what I'm never saying. He's going to have to win the game with his, uh, offensively. I've I don't never think, said anything other than I don't that, think though. Auburn matches up well offensively right and now to provide the type of run, whether it's a quarterback or anybody else. That's it. Okay. It's the only point I'm making. And I'm and, and and what I was saying about Sanford was again a lot of what they did, right, isn't going to matter versus versus Texas AM. Hmm. What I don't think it's gonna matter. The same guys got the same targets on Saturday. Jay Fair had seven receptions for 93 yards. Fairweather. We've seen that. We've seen that for three games. All this chemistry that you're saying that he developed with the wide receivers, I'm looking at the stat sheet, and I'm just like, where? Okay, so again, you're you, you can't you can't really have that both ways, right? You were you're, you want to say that these anecdotal things don't matter when it comes to Peyton Thorne running? That's not going to matter. He doesn't need to be able to if he's not a threat, as in he's going to break off a hundred yards in the game, then it doesn't matter. But then you're saying the chemistry that he builds with receivers, even though it's a small you amount. You brought up chemistry. <laughs> I know you're OK. You're you're arguing both sides of a, of different points, but you can't have it both ways. Is my point. Anyway, uh, let's move on. We'll get into the comments. Section Auburn loses the by team. 10. OK. Prepare That's yourself fine. emotionally, chat. <laughs> Auburn loses the game by 10 points. We appreciate everybody for jumping in here in the conversation. Um, let's see. We got a super chat here from Auburn Dad who says, Mike, let's hope AM thinks like you do and we burn it. I'm happy to be wrong about this, by the way. The, the part, uh, the great part about booging is, is that when you anti boog, you're happy to be wrong, right? Like, so you, I won't come on this show and sweat one tear if Auburn wins. Oh, no, Auburn didn't win. Oh, my God. I will play both sides of that coin. <laughs> so, yeah. 
Uh, let's see here. What uh, we got a lot of comments in here. People agreeing, disagreeing. Uh, I didn't. I didn't mark any of those. <sighs> we will. While you was off screen, you could have been marking some comments, man. Oh my I bad, didn't. man. I was. I was really enjoying this. I'm sorry. I was really enjoying. You, got, you, you messed got, up the screen ratio. You got to work, bro. Can't just be sitting here being an observer. I don't know. This boy just took a Chris break. Brown <laughs> says he has a hundred dollars that says Mike G is right. Like, listen, man. I'm, listen, I know there's there's two types of fans here to start the season, right? There is the overly optimistic, right, and there's the you know the, the pessimists, right? And I like I'm lean, at, coming into this game. I'm leaning more toward the pessimist side, right, based on what we've seen in the first three games, right? And that and that's what my pick reflects. I'm just a little bit more pessimistic about Auburn's chances. And if this game were in Auburn, I might feel a little differently. Um, yeah, I don't know, man. Like I, the way this set up, I expect I expected more out of this offense through three games of the season. And it's not to say that they can't make a big jump on Saturday. They can certainly make a big jump, and everything I could say could be right. Right? We may see something we've never seen before, and it might look well oiled and well tuned. I, yeah, I, I, I don't think I said that either. Like you're you're not hearing anything I'm saying. I'm not unfortunately, th- that's okay. Uh, Drake uh, Barefoot right. said Peyton Thorne won't need to run. ATM secondary sucks, and Peyton Thorne will eat it up. We'll see. Uh, let's see. I don't know why I agree with their secondary sucks. I love y'all, man. I love uh, y'all. Ed Darby says he doesn't have to be a serious threat to run. Yes. <laughs> Tim Monk says we need Jazzy with a distraction challenge. <laughs> <laughs> uh, man, we, we're allowed to get on here and not agree on everything, y'all. We ain't, nothing's going to happen. Uh, they think I'm gonna come over to Ike House and poison this coffee. Yeah, I don't even drink coffee, so you just be poisoning my oh, wife. They go like rough as shit. <laughs> uh, fortunate degree says his running ability is a threat, though. So here's a question I have for you guys, and we're gonna get to our drawing here in just a minute. How much do you think Robbie Ashford plays in this game? Like I have, if you get I, a, a snap count. Just how many snaps do you think Robbie Ashford's gonna get in this game? If it's a, if it's a close game. If this is actually a game going into the fourth quarter, I'm going to say less than five. Mm. Right now, here's what <laughs> if we did learn anything from Saturday, it's that they're committed to Peyton Thorne as quarterback. As QB yeah. one, they're committed to Peyton Thorne. So they stopped at the QB switch stuff mm. and they they were going to make sure that he settled in as QB one. And the game, Mike and I kind of argued about this at halftime. I felt like the way the game was going, I was like, well, you're not going to pull him out now. Like, you're not going to pull him out after halftime in this one. And he went well into the third quarter before we saw Robbie, I believe. When did Robbie come uh, Yeah, it was third quarter before he came in the game. That's correct. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was, yeah, it was well into the third. He got a – Thorne got at least two drives in the third quarter before – yeah, they Robbie only it. came in that first time in the red zone again. His first appearance was that after that Correct. long Peyton Thorne run where he almost scored, they got down to the one. Robbie yeah. came in and, and, and got play. the touchdown. Right. Yeah. So, yeah, I don't think that I, Hugh Freeze was asked this question in Impressor where he said, you know, hey, man, would, doesn't it make sense if you're trying to get a quarterback settled in to let one actually get settled in? And then Saturday, what did we see? We saw him stick with Thorne until Thorne got it or didn't get it. Now, I pressed him on this on Monday and said, hey, can we expect you to continue this, what we saw on, on, you know, last Saturday, this Saturday? And he expressed faith in Peyton Thorne, but also said that the guy who does the job has to do the job well. Paraphrasing him, but he was like, listen, you, you got to do your job well. So... If the game is going as close and Auburn, if the game is close, I don't, I, I, I don't think that it's going to matter whether Auburn is moving the ball offensively really or not. Like if it's a low scoring game, drag it out game, Thorne plays till the end. We might see a gadget here for Robbie or a red zone call to try to get a touchdown and create some parity, but I don't. I I think maybe I I will go less than seven snaps if the game is close, hmm. right? If Auburn is getting below, like if they're <laughs> if it's not going well at all, and and A and M is pulling ahead, 
then I, I think you might see Robbie by the second half. Mm-hmm. I, think he, I think he will bench Thorne and he'll go with Robbie if AM is pulling away and it's not going well, right? But if it's a close game and, and Payne Thorne is maybe struggling a little bit, but Auburn is within striking distance, I think most coaches are inclined to stick with their guy and let them tough it out until yeah, the end of the game. That makes sense, unless they're just right. offensively like stagnant and you just need, you know, a yeah, but Thorne, oh, and, and this is barring Thorne turning the ball over like four times or something crazy, right? Like, <laughs> which is not unheard of. That, yeah, yeah, that's like, really the worry, yeah. Yeah, yeah. If he's if he's not, uh, yeah. So I should add that caveat. If he's if they're not scoring, but he's not turning the ball over, they're going to stick with Thorne the entire game, right? If he is turning the ball over, then you'll see him get pulled, and Robbie will get a significant amount of snaps in this in this game. Be will thoughts on that? For how many snaps you think Robbie gets this game? I was going to say ten. I think he gets double digit snaps. If we don't have the utmost confidence in our offensive line versus their defensive line in short yardage or red zone situation, you put Robbie in because it's a difference maker. That doesn't mean that they're going to give Robbie the ball and say, hey, get a couple drives in. I don't think that happens unless, to Mike's point, things are going badly. I think what we've seen between Cal and Sanford is if if, if Peyton Thorne starts making some mistakes, you have reason to concern. And it's not that he can't get it back together. It's just that I don't think you got that much time to let him dig a deeper hole before you make some changes. Now, to be fair, at Cal – they did. They put Robbie in at some times that really didn't make a lot of sense for what was happening in the drive to that point in the down and distance. And it didn't turn things around because there was no rhythm. Like that's not where you start Robbie, a third, third and four, and then a false start in third and nine. Like that's that's not what you do, especially if you're not gonna let him throw the ball. So they they let Peyton Thorne get his reps. He looked better eventually after he had gotten his reps and stayed in the game the whole time. But what's going to be What is he going to do those first two, three drives? That's really it. I think that's the entirety of this game. What is he going to do those first two or three drives? And that's why I said coming in, I I have no idea what to expect from this guy as a starter because he's made significant mistakes every time he set set foot on the field for Auburn. Significant mistakes. And we're finally playing somebody. Well, not not in the first game, but the the, the, next two games for sure. No, we didn't have any turnovers against UMass. So Okay, that's right. We did, we did, we did. So – I, I don't know that we have a reason to expect. One thing we I think we can expect, and this is something that we haven't been able to expect in a long time, what I don't think is going to happen is that we're going to bang our head against the wall doing something that's not working repeatedly. Now, that's a difference I can say between this year and, and last year. We've heard Hugh Freeze talk about how he likes to go save some things for the second half. I got, you know, if it's some stuff we see, we like to have a better game plan in the second half, save some of that stuff for then. What that means is I don't think we're going to just get, I don't think it's going to be a blowout. I don't. The question will come down to, as it probably will for the rest of the year, if Peyton Thorne is a starter, can he execute the game plan soundly? Because for the world, for once, I have faith in the game plan, in, in the coaches mm. on offense. Can he execute it without messing us up and putting us in the hole? We'll see. We definitely will see. All right, it's giveaway time, and then we're going to get back into some of these comments. We are giving away this War Report mug to somebody. Hashtag get your weight up right now. Uh, and get it in before I uh, take this thing off screen because I ain't finna be waiting forever for y'all to figure out an hour and three minutes later that you want the thing. All right, 112 people, though. 112 people entered this time. That's the most we've had in a minute. Somebody's got to win this mug sponsored by War Eagle Oil. Today's winner is TK. Frequent commenter TK. Good to see you in here, man. I've seen you comment pretty recently, so I think he's still going to be here. Uh, let's get into these comments a little bit more. Uh, John Brandon with the super chat says, as a self-proclaimed expert on maturity, Mike and I grow up guys laughing. Okay. Okay. Y'all. LOL. Uh, War Eagle jumps in with the super chat and says, I wish the games were this long and entertaining without commercials. Damn, be will. <laughs> what did we see? Man, we saw we saw a good discussion. We saw these, these the, the clock root. rules. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> we got better clock rules in college football right now, too. <laughs> uh, SS Austin jumps in and says nobody is saying he's going to run for 100 yards. He's saying they are going to have to respect the run from the quarterback. No, I don't think they're going to have to. Yeah, I disagree with that. Yeah. Uh, Philip Coleman says, I get what Mike is saying. Thorne won't be pulling away from guys when he takes off running. I don't think he has to. 
Right. So, I, but I, I don't, I don't think that either. I don't think he has to pull away from guys. I just think they're going to leave him open and he's going to be able to pick up a couple of yards with his legs every now and then. I don't think that that's a crazy statement to make. Yeah. Uh, let's see here. Um, Martavius 205 says they are going to be much more athletic than what we've seen this season. Mm, Speaking of the Texas sure. A&M defense, mm-hmm. I agree with that wholeheartedly. Uh, Tyler Rick says Mike is right. If we play like this Saturday, we will lose. Uh, Philip Mixon jumps in and says, Thorne cannot run against AM. If he does, he will get killed. You know, so in that, I, I keep thinking back to there was, I want to say it was 2011, and y'all right with me on this. Bama, that was like the best Bama defense of the Nick Saban era to that point. They were killed. That was the 9 6 LSU Bama game, right? And they had their game before the Iron Bowl was, or like somewhere in November, was Georgia Southern. Georgia Southern ran triple option. They scored more points on Alabama than the majority of the SEC teams. Of the eight SEC teams that Alabama played that year, Georgia Southern scored 21 real American football points on that Alabama defense. Your American football points, I like that, yeah. Yes. (laughs) They scored more than us. They scored more than LSU. They scored more than a lot of teams, all right? Nick Saban was asked after the game, like, well, what happened? He was like, hey, well, well, when we scheduled them, they weren't playing that scheme. And we knew they ran it because they've been running it this year. But if we knew they were going to be running triple option, we wouldn't have scheduled them. Mm -hmm. (laughs) One thing that I think is very important here is scheme matters a lot. The the whole advantage of the RPO is not that you don't you don't have to have a Robbie Ashford running the offense at quarterback for an RPO to work. You have to commit to stopping the run from the running backs because the quarterback is not just going to run behind the running backs when he hands the ball off. He's going to run it the other way or he's going to throw it short quickly. He has to make the right reads. The defense cannot cover everything. That's the advantage of the RPO. You're going to give up something. So if the thing that they choose to give up is Peyton Thorne, no, he won't run for six, seven, eight yards, a long yard, 40-yard run or whatever it was. Three, four, five, sure. He can get those, and that adds up. And if that's what they want to give up, fine. If they say, no, nah, man, we're tired of that, well, somebody's open. Jay Fair is open. Fairweather's open. Hey, if Hooks and company have gotten their communication and their route running better, he's open. If Coy Moore's back on the field and he's healthy, he might be the one that's open. That's the possibility here. I don't think anybody thinks Peyton Thorne is, is Robbie Ashford athletically because he had one really good running game. They gave up the quarterback runs. That's what they chose to give up because they doubted that Peyton Thorne could hurt them. Now, it's Sanford. And, yeah, it's, it's harder for you to contain P5 athletes. But you still got to give up something. The scheme gives you something do, to take. Do you, though? Yes, you <laughs> right. do. You're saying there's no perfect defense for an RPO? A perfect defense? No. No. I mean, you're talking like the 2001 Ravens or some stuff? Maybe. Yeah, 85 yeah, Bears? Yeah, sure. I mean, if they, yeah, if they execute it at a high level, then sure. Right. Yeah. yeah. I, I'm not This Texas A&M them. defense has it's, not been executing at a high level against everybody. So that's what I, I, that's, I don't get where the comp, I, I get you not liking Auburn in this. I don't get your confidence in Texas A&M as if I'm not that trying. it's, it's a crazy is that I'm not that confident in Texas A&M. I'm just really down on Auburn's offense. That's what I'm, I'm saying. Like you, you have really down you, offense. you have to have some confidence that because you just said, do they have to be perfect? You're just like, well, we're just not going to execute nearly well enough that it'll matter. Basically. No, I didn't say do they have to be perfect. I said there's no perfect defense for an RPO. You're saying it can't be defended at all if executed right. Right, but then you follow that up by saying that, yeah, if you execute well, but B. Will's point is that they're not going to execute well. So which which one? No, I'm talking about Auburn's offense. I'm talking about Auburn's offense. I'm talking about Auburn's offense. offense. But that's not what I'm talking about. You just changed the subject. I'm talking about Auburn's offense execute. If Auburn's offense executes well, sure, there would be something open, right? right? If that's that was my point, I don't know why you went on and ran about Texas AM's defense. I'm talking about it's Auburn's offense. Rant. If they if they execute it well, sure, something may be open, right? You know, the point I was making was I, I think that you can have a good play and have a great defense at the same time, too. I'm not that confident that Texas AM is going to do it, that going to be able to do that. I'm just saying I don't, I, I don't, I don't think they're going to have to versus this offense. 
as pro- based on what we've seen from Auburn, I don't that's, think that they're going to have to run a bunch of per- perfect defenses to stop this. That's I mean, literally you know, like, what like, I said. That's why I said Auburn you're not will stop listening themselves. to me. I literally so what are you arguing that? with me about? <laughs> I'm not arguing with you. I ask you a question. You're not listening. You just talking, bro. You like, said I, I disagree. Like, I don't understand. You started with I don't understand where your thing in uh, Texas. Hey, I'm talking about Auburn's offense. I'm talking about it. You said, I don't understand. Correct. And then blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, what do you don't understand? Right. I'm That's what I'm, that, there's offense. the problem. Blah, blah, blah. You're not listening. All right. Uh, Todd Jordan says, no turnovers and we win if we play like we did Saturday. Yeah, I mean, yeah. Okay. Yeah, no. <laughs> I don't agree with it either. I think, I think it's fair. TK is here. So TK, we definitely want to make sure that you are going to get your merchandise. If you don't know the drill already, you need to be sending us an email uh, to business at the And uh, make sure you send your address. It's a mug so you don't have to send in a size. You know, if you want to send a size in, that's just, you know, your prerogative It's not going to mean anything. Uh, but thank you for being a loyal member of the War Report. We will get that out to them in the mail to you as soon as we possibly can. Take a couple more comments before we get out of here. Uh, Kazan Jahib Johnson Sr. says, you all wouldn't dare speak up for Robbie like you're doing Thorn? Man, how long I you been watching us? I was about to say, <laughs> <laughs> that can't be directed at us. <laughs> Everybody oh, yeah. been accusing us oh, for caping for Robbie forever, so that, yeah. that's got to be directed at the chat. I don't know. Yeah, what yeah, yeah. Wait, wait, what? Are you about? <laughs> okay. Um, twenty two busy says, "Are we more athletic than anyone A and M has faced?" I think Miami is uh, equally, if not better, in athleticism. I will give Auburn's defense front. some credit in this one. I, yeah. I wonder what kind of situations they're going to be in in this one right like i mean think about cal right like offensive less that defense in some crappy situations and they still held them to 10 points yeah right and but and now it helped that their kicker couldn't make a kick right which i don't think is going to be the case on saturday now that texas a m kicker is good yeah so like i, I i'm I'm telling you on the road, it's it's just going to be, and you know, it's going to, if it's a, I think Auburn has to win, can't win a shootout. I don't think Auburn can win a shootout. This turns into a shootout, Auburn loses big. I think they're going to have to find a way to win a low scoring drag knockout game somehow. The defense is going to have to help them, give them a short field someplace, right? The defense is definitely going to have to show up. So main matchup, I'm reiterating, I believe it's going to be Connor Wegman versus Auburn secondary. They can stop him from passing the ball. There's your low scoring game where you can maybe score like 17 points and win this. <laughs> you know, that's that's what I would hope for if I was a fan. Uh, let's see here. Uh, apparently, people are saying Mortal Kombat here in the comments. That be will had to start that one. Um, <laughs> yeah, yeah, I did. Yeah. Do, 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 do. Uh, Chris Brown says Ike has no point. Uh, you're completely wrong. You two are not listening if you're saying I have no point, but that's cool. Um, I don't, I don't, I don't understand disagreeing with my point and saying I don't have a point. Those are in two different hemispheres of conversation. Uh, you can disagree with the point all you want to, but to say I don't have one, that just means you're not listening to the point that I'm making, which is fine. Mm-hmm. You don't have to listen to me. Just listen to the person you agree with and thumbs up the uh, video. Uh, Gregory Purdue says Auburn has to get a pass rush on Texas A&M's QB. Got to agree with yeah. this statement completely. Yeah, yeah I do. Um, but I still think regardless, the secondary is going to have to step up. Wegman will throw some directly at you. He'll do that. He's prone to that. Like he will throw some balls directly at you. And if you can take advantage and you can get the ball back for your offense, um, you know, get them some more offensive possessions. uh, I think they're going to need it. I think they're going to need the extra touches. So like the turnover differential in this one, like I think, I think that Texas A&M is doing pretty poorly so far this year turning the ball over i think they've had three turnovers all season so far um they've had two takeaways if i'm not mistaken they had yeah they've had three they had three turnovers versus miami alone miami had one so on the season they're what let me see here statistics turnovers defense uh, i can't find that stat easily but like um 
I, and whenever you play a road game, getting turnovers definitely is critical. Yeah. Right. So, you know, I mean, and I was kind of like a novice statement to make. If you get turnovers, you have a better chance to win. Um, but I'm stressing that I think the secondary is definitely going to have it, – it's a little easier when you're getting pressure on the quarterback, for mm-hmm. sure, and you're forcing him into bad throws. But I, I think that's where they need to put all their energy. Um, Petrino, you know, and it's weird. Right when you don't expect something, maybe it can happen. Like they – I guess, you know, uh, uh, maybe in the point that you're making about Thorne running the ball, like if they don't expect it, maybe like he he pulls out and, and hits a big one, right? Um, it, it's weird. It, it was like, you know, when we played Mississippi State back in the day, whenever they broke a big run, it just felt wrong because <laughs> they throw, throw the ball like 60 times. Like they never run, right? And they threw so much, you just, they lull you to sleep with it. And then all of a sudden they, you know, rip off a big run. Uh, I know everybody was worried about pass defense coming. I mean, run defense coming into the season. Right. And then, you know, versus Cal, I thought they did a good job shutting down Jaden Ott and that Cal running game. Uh, Cal fans were talking reckless. They felt real confident about Ott running all over because how could y'all, y'all couldn't stop UMass and they didn't do much on the ground. So it'll be interesting to see what Petrino does in this one. He's definitely a pass heavy kind of guy. Yeah. But I wonder if, again, he tries to throw Auburn and maybe come in and establish the run on this one. They've got some good running backs, too. I liked what I yeah, saw yeah. from uh, both Owens and uh, – Bain? Is his name? Uh, no. No, Hold on. Owens I don't Ruben Owens. That's his name. Ruben Owens is the backup. The, Bain is uh, the guy at Miami. That's my bad. Yeah, Amari Daniels. That's the other kid. Sorry. Mm. Apologies to Amari Daniels. I wasn't trying to disrespect you, even though he's a starter. But I do think that they have two good running backs there. Uh, the question is how heavily they're going to lean on the run. They've really been trying to get that pass game going this season. Um, and maybe that was one of those things where they were like, they're forced into it in the Miami game because of how the score started to get away from them. Uh, but and then the other games, maybe they're just trying to work on the pass game because they know they need to be able to do that a little bit better. It will be interesting to see how this matchup goes this weekend. All right. Anybody got any final thoughts before we get out of here? You know, oh, I, oh, go ahead. Go I, ahead. Go ahead. I, th- I think so much about every time we've had a good season, we bottomed out in a game before we hit a, a stride. 2017, we looked abysmal against Clemson on the road. Got off. Mm-hmm. Didn't know what we were doing. And then we lost a, a game that we should have won at LSU as well. But the offense had potential. It had to get going. Of course, 2013 at LSU, you know, we dropped that game and and then we got going. And for this team, I th- I do think we're a game behind schedule. I think we should be further along than we are right now. But I also have more faith in this coach, in this coaching staff than I've had in the last two coaches combined. Just because we haven't shown it yet doesn't mean that we don't have something to show. And I can't I can't disagree with Mike in that, no, we have not looked great. We haven't yeah. even looked good on offense. But that doesn't mean that we can't look good on Saturday. And that's that's why I'm leaning, um, of course, partially homerism because you know I would declare that is every is Avery Jones hurt me? Avery Jones, Avery hurt? Jones, no, no, no. It was who we had Cam Stutz, 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 the one. Cam Stutz, Stutz I'm yeah. sorry. So he I was think reportedly is okay. at, at practice. Yeah, I think yeah. Stutz is okay. okay. Uh, Isaiah Miller might be the one who might miss a little bit, but okay. Um, but yeah, I think otherwise we're good up front. Right. One thing that I I can say for certain is. I agree with your assessment of yes, AM's passing game, Mike. It, it did look good in Miami, even though they lost that game. But our our secondary has been pretty light. They're dirty. They're, they're one of the best in the country, if you ask yeah. me. Yeah. And we screamed it before the season started that this would be the best position group on this team. We interviewed these guys, the Jack Boys. Like it, it I mean, they had a ton of returning experience. Mm-hmm. Um, they've got clear leaders and they've got a whole lot of talent and speed in that secondary. Yeah. Um, so I, I am I'm excited to see what they do in you know to start the game if they can produce a turnover. I'm a little worried about punt return. Yeah, I mean but I think the, the, I think that their their strategy for punt return in this game is just gonna be field it. Yeah, <laughs> and catch it. Yeah. Yeah. Catch it or get out of the way. Like I just I don't unless somebody is um, you know, I've heard I, I don't want to say who I've heard is gonna has been back there um fielding punts that we have not seen yet this year. But uh, they have put some different guys back there that have done some punt return stuff before. So maybe oh, yeah. we have an opportunity. But I don't even think that they should be trying to get a lot of stuff. In the, just go just go try to block all of them, bro. Just go try to block all the punts yeah. and get away from it, man. 
Yeah, play, uh, play Ke- safe or uh, go, go after it. Keontae was electric back there uh, to start the season, yeah. so it's disappointing. You know, we wish him a speedy recovery from the surgery. Um, but yeah, like I, I would be on this one. The secondary has been fun so far. I'm excited to see them tested against, you know, a decent passing team, right? To see what they can do, mm-hmm. uh, because you're going, you're going to have to test somebody. Kay and Lee talked about how you know when you know he they immediately tried him mm-hmm. right versus cal i believe it was like they went after him and he defended some passes right well got his head around he played well mm-hmm. so you know where are you attacking this secondary if you're attacking it you throw a dj james like you know he should have two picks on the season already right mm-hmm. right jalen simpson is, is producing them donovan kaufman is everywhere man like like, who are you attacking on this defense in the secondary? Right. Uh, you know, Auburn, Auburn's going to have to, you know, produce something. If not produce points defensively in this one, I mean, just give the offense a short field twice in this game and give them a chance to put a touchdown and a, and a field goal on the board mm-hmm. from short fields where Thorne doesn't have to drop, you know, 85 to 90 yards to get a touchdown, right? And Hugh Freeze can get a little creative with the play call and, you know, um yeah I, it, yeah it just will be interesting to see what they what they do what tactic do you take in this one right they came out and just they looked like it looked like they were running an air raid for a little bit on saturday right with as much as they let thorn throw the ball you know just trying to get him to get in a groove um on saturday i just i wonder if they'll be able to do that in college station you know and for 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 what it's worth for for um Freeze's comments about Thorn pressing and like, you know, mm-hmm. I just, I can't like, I'm just, I'm disappointed that it's taken him this long to get settled in. Yeah. At quarterback, I mean, especially when the coach said, you know, I get, I, you know, named him the starter hoping that he would stop pressing and like, you know, listen, he was throwing headsets against UMass. Over to like there, there was you know you know why you felt like there were turnovers against UMass, yeah, because there were some plays where Freeze was really upset yeah. with the decisions that he made, right? And so you know it's going to cost you an SEC play. It's just going to cost you an SEC play. Uh, the the one w- uh, against um, Sanford where the, the deep throw to shorter, not oh no I'm sorry the missed throw to shorter underneath oh the right. Theory. Through it to Coy Moore, yeah. Yeah, correct. Yeah, they got intercepted. You can't do that Saturday. You absolutely positively can't do that Saturday. Those are momentum-killing and back-breaking turnovers on the road in the SEC. Auburn was at home, and they got away with it. And what was kind of a slow game offensively, I don't I don't think a, a point wasn't scored in the first quarter, right, against correct. Stanford? Right. Yeah. I, I, I hope they don't get off to that kind of start. Find points in the first quarter of this game. I, I, I just hope they can start fast offensively, especially on the road. It helps if you can just find some points. Don't disagree with any of that. Um, I think that, you know, Auburn has an opportunity here to come out and make a statement. Um, Hugh Freeze is playing with house money right now. Let's be clear. Jimbo Fisher is not. He's got yeah. a lot of money on the house, but he's not playing with house money any longer. There's a lot of pressure on uh, that team to be able to produce. A couple more late super chats in here before we get out of here. James Barnett says, fellas, Auburn is the number one, is number one in pass defense in the SEC. Hey. And Joshua Jordan with the super chat says, I think with the RPO, if Texas A&M decider, decides, I think is what's supposed to be there, to ignore Thorne's running ability, it will hurt the game enough. He doesn't have to run for 100, but if he keeps the chains moving, that's advantage Auburn. Yeah, for sure. All right, we are going to get out of here. We appreciate you guys jumping in here with another midweek report. Mike G, take the people out of here with some announcements. Uh, listen, become a Patreon member. If you want to hear more being Ike going at it, talking about RPOs and Peyton Thorne running and Texas A&M, become a patron. And if enough of y'all sign up, maybe we'll do a special segment for y'all. Mike and Ike duke it out. uh anyway uh become a patron guys you know when you guys do this it's like becoming a micro sponsor of our channel 
enough of you guys do this. Uh, we can continue to bring you even more content. If you like the firesides, if you like some of the special content, the in-person content we're doing, your patron memberships help make that content possible. So we appreciate everybody who does that. We also appreciate everybody who gifts memberships to other members. This helps keep us going as well, too. Uh, they didn't have the option after the first month to extend that membership, but give somebody a taste of what it's like to have a green name and be part of the green name gang. Congratulations to our raffle winner tonight, TK. We appreciate you. And special shout out to Lynch Toyota for sponsoring this segment. Lynch Toyota of Auburn. Guys, we've talked about it. Toyotas are great vehicles. If you're in the market for a new vehicle, visit Lynch Toyota of Auburn um, and, and support local for what it's worth, right? Like, you know, uh, we believe a lot in community at Auburn. Uh, Lynch Toyota is doing a lot of things in the community. We appreciate them for that. We appreciate them for being a part of our channel this year, this fall during the football season. So LynchToyota.com, uh, uh, LynchToyota of Auburn.com. Check out their inventory. See if they got something you like on the lot. Last but not least, uh, the podcast network is live, up-tempo, college loop. Uh, just a sec. Go check out all this audio content. we got lots of great stuff coming for you guys uh, this fall, and, and that continues all throughout the year. Uh, so we appreciate up-tempo and college loop for coming on to the War Report podcast network. Yes, indeed. If you all have not already, you know you need to be doing the necessary, and that is sharing the video. It's over now, but somebody else needs to rewatch this later. Make sure that you like the video before you get out of here. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. You can follow us on social media. We are at The War Report on Twitter and Instagram. We're TW Report on TikTok. Before I get out of here, I would be remiss in not saying thank you to Auburn Dad, John Brannon. Uh, and I'm missing somebody, Chris Jones and Wesley Hilson, all for gifting memberships during hey. this show today. We appreciate, appreciate you guys appreciate for continuing to support us in all those ways. We're out of here until to nope, not tomorrow because tomorrow's Thursday. Until Friday, we're going to be right back at you with another uh, edition of the Morning Drop Facts and Nas style. So make sure that you get your questions in. We'll have the graphic up some point tomorrow for you guys to drop your questions in there. We'll holler at y'all on the next time. And as always, War Eagle. War Eagle.